Hey everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media at smarthustle.com. Thanks for joining me for another exciting interview with another exciting person. We either interview entrepreneurs or those who have something to say to the entrepreneurial small business community. If you're hearing the sound of my voice or seeing my face, uh, please give us an uplink, give us a comment, give us a like, give us a share, give us something. Tell somebody else about this because it is going to be an amazing interview that is going to be well worth your time. We're talking to Terry Loma Burden. I could have pronounced her name wrong. She'll correct me in a minute. And uh, she is the uh, first, in fact, customer success manager at Asana and other things that she's done. And we're going to talk to her about really two things. A, productivity and task management and et cetera solutions, which Asana does so well. And then again, for the gazillions of you out there that are using Asana in some way, shape or form, I hope. We'll see. This is what I've asked. We'll see how this rolls. Some tips and advice and how we can make the most out of Asana. So with that long intro, Terry, thank you so much. And do tell me, did I get the name right or wrong? Ramon, it's all good. You were so close. So it's Terry Lomax Burden, but you were so so close. Okay. As you know, <laughs> in some of the names, the X is either silent or you say it. So I made exactly. a judgment call then. Very nice. <laughs> and I think, Terry, you're in the West Coast in California. How is your day as we record this? How's it going? How do you feel? How are things with your family, with your world personally? Yes. How are you doing? Yeah, you know, thank you for asking. I appreciate that. I am doing well. I am feeling great. Um, yeah, I can't complain. Good. Excellent. It's a good complain. way to be. It's a good way to be. I know yeah. some people I've had friends, they said their dog just died or they were having oh, no. and that stress. So I always ask, you know, people. Yeah, you never know. Like so, but today, me too, I'm blessed and doing well. Um, but Terry, thank you for that. Why don't we jump right in? And as I said before, I, I'm talking a lot at the opening here, but this is your space. Just right at the top, it's not a specific question, Terry, but as you've looked at all the customers you and your colleagues handle, mm -hmm. as you've looked at the broad space of Asana, what are some of the big, and not Asana focused, but things that you're saying, Ramon, Here's how just to maximize your day, be productive, whether that be a team or an individual. And I'll recap these questions for you, but why don't you just start off sharing your heart for what you're yeah. saying we need to know? Absolutely. I think one thing that's super important is having a game plan before the week begins. I think I do this on a personal level, but also in the working world as well when I manage my individual task list. And so I am by no means not a sports person, although I love the passion that people have for sports. But what I will say is it's kind of like you going out, you know, if you're a basketball player, you're going out on the on the court and you're coming up with your strategy while you're in the midst of the game, right? No one would do that. So for me, it's like, I use the weekend, typically Sunday nights to plan out the rest of the week and figure out what am I optimizing for this week? What are my goals? And I actually love Monday. People are like, why? Monday's like your favorite day. I'm like, it is, I have so much energy. I'm excited. I know when I'm focused on that week. And so I think for me, it's understanding what are my goals for this particular week? And then when Monday comes, you already, you can hit the ground running. You already know what you're doing. So I think that is a big um, tip there is just, just, just to have a plan before you jump into the week. I love it. I love it. And I don't want to jump too far ahead into a sauna, but I know yeah. this touches with that. But any thoughts on the aspect of the weekly planning versus daily planning, quarterly to quarterly? What, do I think today about where I want to be in 2025? You know, mm -hmm. any thoughts on how you personally or your team, you know, representing Asana, how, how, what's your advice on that aspect? Yeah, you know what? I love to think big picture and then scale it back. So ideally, I would think about well, first, let's just do a brain dump, right? Okay. Many of us, speaking for myself, are overthinkers. Yes. We have so many ideas, so many thoughts. So I love to do a brain dump, dump everything out on the paper, no judgment, you know, no restrictions, all the goals that we want to accomplish, and then get focused on, okay, what are we focusing on for this fiscal year? And ideally, this isn't an Asana project, right? And so you have everything that you focus on for that fiscal year. And then I like to break it down by quarter, right? So then we're breaking down the goals by quarter, and then we're breaking them down by month. So it sounds tedious, but... I have worked full time for the majority of my career, Ramon, and had side hustles as well. So writing a book, having a weekly podcast, doing all these things. And folks are often like, how do you do all these things? And I'm like, well, I know what I'm optimizing for, for which season in my life, right? And so having these different strategic goal mapping systems, it helps so much, which is why I love Asana and I'm so obsessed with our product. So I think after you go from the quarterly to the monthly, then you know, get your weekly to-do list. And then that's when you go into a sauna. And typically what I'll do in my, my task, here's a little tip for you. Please. In my, my task in the sauna, I have custom sections that I create. So I have a little section for each day of the week. So when I come into the office, come into the office, air quotes, <laughs> on Monday, <laughs> on Monday, 
I have a Monday section. I know exactly what I'm doing on Monday. I can kind of take a look at the rest of the week. I know exactly what I'm doing each day of the week. And as I, you know, complete tasks, as things change, I just rearrange them. So I always feel a lot like I feel at peace when I, you know, start the day on Monday because I know the big vision. I can always double tap into the big vision, take a look at the project and then scale back to see, okay, what am I focused on right now? I love it. And I think I, did, I didn't want to go back. I wanted to respond to what you said about the week. I didn't, I rushed ahead, but I think for sure, I just want to underline that and echo that, that, that Sunday as it were, if it's not your week, do something. But I think yes. Tara, you're so right because that's, that's people, people call me the same thing. Ramon, how do you get so much yes. done? I'm not special. I got the same exactly. amount of hours, but that aspect of me sitting down Sunday with a 30 minutes, an hour, 10 minutes, I look at the whole week for, for this interview, for example, I, as yeah. you may, you know, as you may have got the email exchange, I had our colleagues, you know, your colleagues, our communication person's name in there. That was the first contact I had. I switched to yours, meaning point is things, little things like that for me, help me. Yes. So I can Sunday, I'm planning what I'm doing. I did that a bit late, but the principle of doing Sunday, <laughs> if it's Monday to Friday. So I like that. I think that's and that's a one simple hack, as it were. I think if you just plan, everything else goes into place. Or I don't know if you've experienced this, Terry. I know that Thursday is going to be an extraordinarily busy day. So I can tell family or friends, sorry, guys, Thursday, dad, in my case, is checked out. But I love the aspect, Terry, of the uh, quarterly, weekly planning. I think that yes. definitely, and annual planning, I think that sets people on the right path. Terry, what do we do about the people who feel absolutely overwhelmed? What can you tell them? Yes, Ramon, absolutely. I totally get it. Let me just say, as a person that overthinks everything and that has so many ideas in my mind and different, you know, just paths that I want to pursue, I think the main thing is going back to what we talked about earlier, that brain dump, mm -hmm. dumping out everything that's in your mind now so that you don't feel overwhelmed, so that you don't think you're going to forget something. And once you have that safe brain dump, then understanding that you don't have to do everything at one time. So asking yourself, okay, based on where I am in life right now, based on the current responsibilities that my personal life, mm -hmm. you know, has before me, what am I optimizing for? Right. And so for me last year, for instance, Ramon, I was working full time and two of my big priorities were podcasting consistently, right? So every week releasing a new podcast episode and writing my book. And so for the first quarter of the year, I was really serious about writing that book. And so for me, that meant not many weekends, right? So I was writing the book on weekends, sometimes before work and after work. So I think it really goes back to getting clear on what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, right? And then understanding what am I optimizing for at this stage in my life? Yeah. And I think that's powerful. And I think you're right. I think you comfort me. I had a call with a coach of mine um, you and I, I, I don't overanalyze things, but I'm guessing like you, you have a busy mind. And she yes. comforted me and said, Ramon, as long as the priorities are done, you can you can say you want to plan to go to the moon it, it, as long as you mm -hmm. prioritize it. So am I hearing what you said correctly? That's how I interpreted what you just said. Prioritize. Absolutely. You are spot on. I love it. I love it. Let's move the conversation a bit uh, or quite a bit, uh, Terry, to Asana. You know, Asana's uh, one of the leading uh, task management uh, project management, you may say it different, so you can have space to correct me on that. Uh, tools in the world, I happen to use it all the time. Uh, why don't you give us an overview for, from your point of view of what is it? For those who may not know what Asana is, and especially Terry, can you talk to people that are still using pen, paper, Excel, uh, Google Tasks, and other tools that, that can work, but it's not a full project task management tool? Talk to those people as best you can. For sure. Well, let me just say I empathize with those people because that is me. I still love my notebook. Okay. I was the person that used to have the planner, you know, with the nice quotes and the pretty yes. colors and all that good stuff. Now, Ramon, the thing is, one day I lost my planner and I felt like I was having a nervous breakdown. I did not know what to do for the day. I was like, everything was in this planner. So now I have backups, right? So I use Asana every day for everything. Um, Asana is a project management tool. So basically we help teams collaborate seamlessly, right? So whether you have a small business, whether you have, you know, an enterprise company, we help teams work together, right, across the world. And I actually use Asana for my podcast, my book launch. I use Asana for groceries. When there's a task in the house that needs to get done, I assign my husband tasks. So Asana is literally the fabric that ties every aspect of my life together. Um, and so, yeah, I would say that Asana is definitely useful for me because now instead of or in addition to having goals written down on paper, I can also have this backup system so that when I'm on the go, I can pull up the mobile app. I can complete tasks, right? I use it for groceries. I can complete tasks <laughs> as I'm in the grocery store. I mean, it's so convenient and it's a great way for you to do those brain dumps and really keep organized and keep everything in one space. 
therapy. And I think that is powerful. The three things to underline there, and there's so much we can talk about, whether it be Asana, but I think even talking about whether competing tools or the, the, the category of task management, A, I, I like how you said, paper's not bad. For me, I don't use paper a lot. I'm taking notes on paper now, but paper's not bad. Millions of people have their stickers and cool things they like, but you're saying use a digital task management to, to uh, supplant that or in addition to that's one. Two, um, I think for sure you can't hit, you know, finished or done or move things around on paper. Sorry, Terry, you just can't do that. <laughs> but I think that's to back up or there's other things you can do with the digital world. And then three, I think the biggest is team collaboration. If you're solo by yourself, which few of us really are, I think even the smallest businesses have some contract or team member you're working with, but I think you really have to kind of go online when you want to collaborate from Texas to Philippines, from Philippines to, you know, Wisconsin, Wisconsin to New Jersey. So that's kind of what I'm hearing you say. Those a few things to for those who are not yet sold on a task management tool. Absolutely, and I do want to add, Ramon, if you're into unicorns and fun characters, I mean, we do celebrate you with some of those fun characters when you complete tasks. There <laughs> so we it's go. fun. There we go. I like it. All right. So the fun is still there. Those people. Oh, don't the have fun is still there. I love it. <laughs> So let's dive into a few things in Asana uh, that people may not know. Uh, no need to verbalize and talk about the product here. We can a bit, but I, you know, I can, we'll put images and all that there. But just those who are maybe talk to Asana customers, maybe let's put it that way. Um, anything we need to know, and I'll just briefly, if I may, I wanted you to speak more, but I'm so excited. I know for me, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Collins has a book called Flywheel. Um, there's other entrepreneur leadership things I've been learning, Terry. And I put some of that into Asana. So I just wanted to tell you that not as a task, it's never going to be checked off done, but there's yes. a certain section that I put into Asana just to remind me how to run my business. So I just wanted to share that's what I'm doing. It may be not how everybody's doing it, but that's one little thing that I'm doing just to run my small business in a more disciplined manner. But please, to you, Terry, um, what are some things we need to know about using Asana better? For sure. Now, please feel free to stop me at any point, Ramon, yeah. because I can geek out about this all day. I get so excited minutes, about it. Sure. <laughs> Go for it. So let's see. The first thing I'll say is one of um, one of the, I want to say, features we have on our podcast is we take questions from our listeners. And so okay. what we've done is we have an Asana project and we have an Asana form connected to that project so that now we have this public facing form similar to a Google form, right, where our listeners can submit the, the form via our website. And now it automatically assigns a task to my co-host and I and Asana, wow. and we can get those questions. So we can like go back and forth, figure out how we want to respond to them. So that's one of my favorite features, Asana forms. We also just released Asana rules. So now you can set up triggers in Asana. So let's say that you have a new task that comes in and maybe you want to loop in a few followers or collaborators on that task. You can do that in Asana, which is really cool. Um, let's see, there are so many other combinations for rules, but I would definitely check out rules as well because it allows you to automate your work and spend less time worrying about work and focusing on the, the stuff that's important, right? The stuff that actually needs to get done. Love it. I love it. I love it. And I know and I know one thing that I like a lot um, is the aspects of uh, tags. Now, again, this is not a ninja thing and maybe I'm a, I'm a sauna baby, but I just found tags and being able to hot link to tags because things can get overwhelming. Not saying it's not a sauna's problem. It's just as you grow, things can get overwhelming. So I use kind of tags like I can say something like Ramon marketing, but inside Ramon marketing tag things related to me speaking. So mm -hmm. does that make sense? Am I using it? Is that like, do I get a thumbs up for that? Or is that like, that's corny? <laughs> No, you get a thumbs up, Ramon. I will say, I, I would encourage you if you aren't using custom fields. Have you checked out custom fields? I know of it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. And the reason I say that is just because tags was V1 of custom fields. So custom fields will make it a bit more powerful and allow you to report in Asana and all that good stuff. But you still get a thumbs up, Ramon. <laughs> I'll get two thumbs up next time for custom fields. <laughs> Um, this is powerful. I think this is very good, Terry. And as you're working on on with your customers, any anecdotes or any things you have, and if you're not ready for it now, it's okay, but two ways I'm asking it. A, uh, any particular customers that you can talk about, not mentioning name per se, but just scenario, metaphorically, like how they've been using Asana or grown, and or two um, use cases, which kind of the same thing, but any, anything on that respect that Ramon, for example, a customer was doing X, now they're doing Y, anything like that come to mind for you? Yeah, you know what? So I I mean, I've worked with so many incredible customers and I think for me, it's so it's so inspiring to see that customers, their work and how they use Asana can vary tremendously. So I had one customer and they helped 
they helped reunite immigrant children with their parents. And they were using Asana to do that work. And when you hear about a customer using Asana in such an inspiring way, I mean, I don't know about you, but it really makes our work more meaningful, right? When you think about customers that are using Asana to you know, get clean water to villages in different countries, mm. like Asana, you can really use it for so many different purposes, right? So you have the autonomy to really build out workflows and use it in the way that suits you and your colleagues. So I think it really just depends on what are you trying to track in Asana? But I think for me, Ramon, some of the most inspiring work would include those customers that are really changing the world using our tool, right? It gives us a sense of pride when we come into the office knowing that, you know what? Someone's actually using this tool to make an impact on the lives of other people, right? Yes, yes, I love that. And I think another thing I'll touch on, Terry, um, if you have anything else, let me know, but I think, and I'm not even sure to ask this, but I find that for online software applications, there are several competitors. There's the direct competitor that's offering exactly what you do, or, you know, not exactly, but direct competitor. I find that's the least competitive. The other competitor is doing nothing. Other competitor <laughs> is often paper, pencil, or Excel. But my question to you, Terry, we, we just more of a chatting about it, more rhetorical is, Talk to those people that use Zapier, which is great. And I think Asana integrates with it, but have like a 10 or 20 different integrations. They're going here, there, and everywhere. And they think that's the best way. Maybe it'd be for a few people, but what I'm, I guess, trying to set up for is that I think that there's, we understand the people who are doing nothing. We've already talked to people using paper, but I think there's a lot of, you know, um, you know at geeks out there that are trying to string together things when a lot of the tools that we have available, like Asana, work just well. Does that make sense what I'm trying to bring out and ask? It does make sense. And I'm probably going to share something a little unconventional, but okay. I totally get where you're coming from, Ramon. One of the things that we really um, pride ourselves on at Asana is understanding that we work better together with other tools, right? Yeah. Some tools, right? Yeah. And so when I say that, what I mean, for instance, is there are customers that come to me and they're like, well, I don't know, should we use Slack or Asana? And I'm like, well, they have very different you know, they, they both serve a very different purpose. So right. we actually use Slack and Asana and we have an integration that allows us to connect our work even further. And so Slack we would use for more of the instant communication, the informal, whereas mm -hmm. Asana, that's where the work gets done. That's where we chat about the work, right? Whereas Slack is more informal. Um, we use Google Drive as well, right? So sometimes you might want to create a draft of a document and it's just better to use Google Docs because that's what it's formatted for. And what you can do in Asana is attach that Google Drive link or that Google Google Doc link directly to the Asana task so that you can drive the work forward. So Asana is really great for like big picture and for driving the work forward. I did also want to share with you, Ramon, we have three project blueprints, right? Because when you go into Asana, sometimes you're like, whoa, where do I start? I have the autonomy to build out so much in here. So when you think about the project blueprints, we have deadline driven, right? So that's going to be like your events, your product launches, your employee onboarding, any agile or sprint processes. And then you have your ongoing processes, which would be like a meeting agenda, right. your request projects, right? Your IT help desk or one-on-one -on -one projects with a manager and their reports. And then finally, Ramon, you might like this one because you're already use, using it in this way, but this is your planning and reference project. Mm. So this is the brainstorms, right? That we talked about earlier, your calendars, employee handbook, or your objectives and OKRs. And so those are the projects where sometimes you may not actually complete the task, but you're using the project as a reference, right? Yes, I love that. And I think two things I got out of what you just said, Terry, is one, um, Asana is so flexible, and even if those who are using other tools, but Asana is so flexible that even going back to your first point, thinking ahead, you didn't say it in this context, <laughs> but thinking ahead and planning, what's, what's this project about? What's the key drivers of this? And map Asana to that, not the other way, not let me just open up the same thing I've been opening up. So we can call this kind of a ninja tip, as it were, but those who are yes. opening their next projects, that's one. Thank you. And then two, I'm hearing also is that aspect of it's okay to use multiple tools. And I think that the problem may happen, but you correct me if I'm wrong. These are my words, not Terry's, yeah. <laughs> you know, is that <laughs> if you start to try to use Google Drive, for example, which is a great tool, when it starts to move to task management, you find yourself checking off, planning ahead in a sheet or going back to Slack, which is a great tool. But then you start to track projects in Slack. That's maybe where that, that you want to think about. You know what? Let's rethink. How are we using this great tool? We, we tipped the tipping point and using it differently. We need to consider integration or something is kind of what, I'm, what I may hear you say as well. 
Ramon, that is spot on. I think understanding the tools strengths and looking at your tool stack and understanding, okay, how are we using each of these tools and what is the purpose? And just understanding that Asana is really where you should be doing the work, right? That's where you should be tracking the work and understanding who's doing what by when and every other tool that you might want to complement, they should all really complement that entire experience. But yes, Ramon, you got it spot on. I love it so much. Terry, anything I didn't ask you, I'm sure there's a thousand things that you wanted to mention or anything that's important to you that you wanted to shout out to our audience before we, I wouldn't say end this discussion, I'll call it pausing because I'm hoping that you'll come back at another time. <laughs> Yes, I would love to. Absolutely. You know what? I would definitely encourage folks that are listening to try Asana out. I mean, you can try us out for free to see if it's a good fit for you and your team. And so definitely check us out. You can, you know, reach out to us on social media as well. We have a really great team there that will support you with any questions. Um, but I just want to thank you so much for your time, Ron. This was super fun. I appreciate your energy <laughs> and love to nerd out about Asana whenever I can. Absolutely. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, again, this has been Terry, who's customer success manager at Asana. For the few who may not know, you can check Asana out at A. ASANA.com, great task management, project management tool that I use as well. And this is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media at smarthustle.com. As I said, if you're hearing this, give us a check mark or a comment, share it with somebody else and have a beautiful day. And thanks again for listening. And you can find all these things at smarthustle.com.